everyone, my name is Angelica and welcome back to The Skag Den. So today I wanted to talk with you guys about how we were able to title and register our school bus. Now we had to title and register our school bus in a very non-traditional way because we were actually in sort of a rush to move from Colorado to Tennessee and in order to make the bus, bus road worthy we needed to get it registered and titled while we were there. So I'm going to list off a few things that we did to get our bus titled and registered so that we could actually move to a different state. All right, so I wanted to preface this by saying that we did our school bus title and registration while we lived in Jefferson County in Colorado. I know each state and each county probably have their own different rules, but this is similar to what we did and our bus is obviously not complete. So we had to do a few little shortcuts to actually get it titled and registered and this makes it become from a commercial vehicle into a recreational vehicle that you can actually drive on the road and it's legal that way. So in Colorado what we had to do was get a few things and I will list the items on the screen that we did. Again this is for Colorado specific, Jefferson County specific, but maybe your county or your state might have something similar. Um, you know, it was really difficult for me to actually find this information. I looked at schoolie.net and they happened to have a little bit of information. It was like four out of six requirements needed plus a few other things that you needed. So basically one of the first things that we needed was a DR244 form, also known as a statement of fact. I believe you can just go to colorado.gov or colorado.dmv.gov and just download it off of there and then you can print it off and either write it in or you can type it in on the PDF version. But what it is is it's a statement of fact basically saying what I am saying is true and I have done these things. Now like I said I don't want to be misleading in any way but what we said that we had done are things that we are planning to do and are going to do. So it wasn't, yeah, we are planning on doing these things and we're never going to do them. We had actually initially planned to do them and want to do them because obviously if our bus is going to be livable, we're going to have to have some of these things done. Um, but we needed the statement of fact, a bus title, bill of sale, weight slip, VIN verification, and for registration you can use insurance and a title and for the insurance we found out that that kind of doesn't matter um, basically I'll go into everything that you need but on the actual statement of fact there were certain things that we had to put on there like um, all the school bus decals were removed here uh, in the state of Colorado you can actually still have your bus yellow but you have to have um, everything that indicates that it's a school bus removed. You can't have the stop sign. So we included on there um, removed school bus decals. You can't have more than five seats for uh, passengers. So we included on there is not operational for more than five passengers. And um, then with the rest of the requirements, the requirements that were needed to do it were, I believe, electrical, toilet, running water, um, a two burner or a, and a, some kind of heating element, a fridge, and um, like an air conditioner or another heating element to actually heat the house. And I believe there's one more, but I will list them on the actual up here so that you guys can see. Um, along with the bus title, now if you are smart, you will keep your bus title in a safe place. For some reason, my husband and I had put it out in our storage trailer and we looked all over the place for it and couldn't find it anywhere until we were actually moving out here and we had already gone through this whole rigmarole. We luckily were able to get in touch with the school district we bought our bus from. They resent us the information to get a new school bus title, yada yada yada. But having the school bus title, your bill of sale, weight slip, fair verification. Um, the way that we did it, we actually spoke with a Colorado State Trooper about the way station because obviously your bus is not titled and registered, so how are you going to be able to get it on the road to actually get it to the way station to get the information you need? I basically told the State Trooper what our um, intentions were, and he said that as long as we had the insurance and all the other documentation we needed with us, and we 
were able to do that. This was around the time that a lot of the protests and rioting were happening, so they kind of, he told me, we have a lot bigger fish to fry than worrying about your school bus on the road. Which luckily, the way station was literally right across the street, across the highway, so we were able to drive it over there. I think it was like $12 to get it weighed, and then you get your little weight slip. And then for the VIN verification, I actually ended up calling a uh, police officer in Wheat Ridge, and I believe his name was Officer Taggart. And he actually was able to come out and perform a VIN inspection. It turns out we actually needed a VIN verification, but he was able to do a VIN inspection and a VIN verification for us for no charge, which was absolutely amazing because I believe you can have a, a state trooper come out and do it, but they charge you about 50 bucks. So that's one way to get around it is to actually call a police officer to have them come out and do a VIN verification and a VIN inspection and um, yeah, so that is what we had done for that. So that pretty much wraps up what you needed to title our bus. Um, and like I said, we had to cut corners. We had to do it somewhat quickly. So, you know, what we had to initially do was we had to insulate our school bus. And unfortunately, the insulation we had used didn't specifically work. You can go check out my insulation video. See for yourself how having DIY insulation that you purchase offline is, or online, is not maybe the best solution for you. But we were waiting for the company to come out and insulate our bus. But the clock was ticking. I mean, we were having to move out here within a month. And so we had to, while we were waiting for the insulators to come out, we basically put just crappy plywood down and made we didn't secure it or anything we just made it look like a regular floor over the framework that we did and we had a crappy little two burner electric stove top that we plugged in we managed to put in a 125 volt system and how we managed to make it work was we had the breaker box and everything in the back and then we used an electrical cord uh, like a extension cord to actually plug into the electrical and that is how we ran certain things. Um, we used, there was a little mini fridge from our travel trailer in our outdoor kitchen that we brought in here. Uh, we used like a mechanical rolling cart to set the electric stovetop on. And then there was something else that we did um, to prove that we had, oh, our toilet. So I'm actually using this toilet at the moment. It is a little container toilet. Basically you unhook, unhook the actual seat from the container and then you could go empty the container wherever well not wherever but in like a super line or in a location meant for that you can put it in a toilet whatever but it's real easy and convenient I think we got it for like 90 bucks off of Amazon and we're currently using it right now because where we're at we're having to somewhat um, be off the grid in a way and so we can't use our black tank here and even though we're living in our travel trailer so we just use that toilet and it's actually come in pretty handy and I think that's actually what we're going to use as a toilet for um, the foreseeable future in our bus but so we did that we brought a toilet in we like I said brought in the stove top brought in the fridge did the electrical and basically you needed four out of six requirements so we skipped the running water we skipped the air conditioner slash um, heating element which we could have brought in our portable air conditioner and we could have probably used that as it but basically we put all these things on the statement of fact that we hooked it up with electric we have you know a running um fridge we have which i better go get <laughs> um <laughs> and we also had a way to cook food and a way to use the bathroom and four out of six requirements is all that we needed um, like i said the other two was have an air conditioner or gas heating element to actually heat the bus or cool the bus and then the other one was running water uh, we could have probably done all of those but we didn't and we had set all this up turned on the electric turned on the stovetop took pictures to show proof that we had done this in case they were going to ask us about it but honestly all i had to do was write this down and sign it on this statement of fact i brought it into the evergreen um, dmv up in uh, evergreen colorado and they were very kind and it was super simple i just i gave them my insurance i gave them 
the title, the bill of sale, weight slip, and verification, and that statement of fact, and they were like, okay, and it turned out to be so much easier than I thought it was going to be. We thought it was going to be some long, drawn-out, crazy thing, but it actually turned out pretty uh, simple, and I think we got out of there. I had to get new trailer, um, new license plate from a trailer, and that ended up costing everything all together about $150, so I was very pleased with that. And so far, so good. You know, we'll have to retitle it or, um, you know, re-register it and everything while we're here in Tennessee, but we're hoping to have everything done before we get to that point. But I just wanted to share with you guys, if you are in a situation where you're kind of in a pickle, because I remember actually when we are in the process of this, um, the rioting, the COVID, a whole lot of things were happening, and a lot of people were actually posting on um, Facebook groups that I was following on schoolies, you know, what have you done to cut corners to get out of, you know, to get it roadworthy and titled and registered quicker because I need to get out of here right now because I don't feel safe. And so those were things that we had done. So if you are in a similar situation, don't cheat the system, obviously. But like I said, if you know that you're in a situation where you're going to complete the items that you listed, it may be perjury or whatever for me to even put that on there. But we are in the process of completing those systems and it was we had good intentions about it so anyway i hope that this video helps some of you guys realize that it is not as daunting and crazy as it seems you can definitely get it done and it's pretty simple i mean like i said each state and county has their own things but anyways i hope that y'all enjoyed this video and i look forward to seeing y'all in the next one